Hey guys, in this video, I'll be soft modding my MVC2 cab. You'll require a micro SD card, card reader, screwdriver, keyboard and mouse, as well as these files. Open the back of the cab and insert the micro SD card to format it. Plug in the USB extension cable into the back of the PCB and then connect the keyboard to it. During some of the steps, you will be hot swapping between the keyboard and mouse. Press the windows plus the end keys to display the top menu. Switch over to the mouse. The system should have now detected the micro SD card. Click setup. During the setup, format the micro SD card as portable storage. Once the format is complete, turn off the cab and remove the card. Insert the micro SD card into a card reader and insert it into the computer. Go ahead and transfer all the files. Safely eject the micro SD card from the computer and plug it back into the PCB. Press the Windows plus N keys to bring down the top menu and click on the settings icon. Scroll down to the storage section and transfer all the files from the micro SD card into the internal storage. Before proceeding, ensure to turn off the Wi-Fi. Go into the internal storage and double click on Nova Launcher to install it. I was able to install Nova Launcher version 6.2.19 without any issues. Anything newer than that was giving me problems. Open Nova Launcher and start the initial configuration. Press the Windows plus N keys again to display the top menu, click on the settings icon, go into the app section, open up Nova Launcher, and finish setting it up. Configure Nova Launcher as the home app. Allow modify system settings. Grant the permissions to the location, phone, and storage, and restart the cabinet. If the system is not booting to Nova Launcher, go into the Settings, Apps, Nova Launcher, and force stop the application. Set Nova Launcher as the home app once again, verify the permissions, and restart the cabinet. If the issue persists, Factory reset the cabinet and start from step one. Nova Launcher opened up to the second page. To remove any of the icons, long press on them to display the menu and then click remove. Swipe up to display additional options. Go into the settings and disable the search bar. Customize Nova Launcher by adding a wallpaper. Note, there's a display issue with this version of Nova Launcher Therefore, I would suggest that you use a smaller image, such as this one with the black border along the edges. When you set the wallpaper, Nova Launcher will blow it up and it will look normal. Press the Windows plus the N key to display the top menu. Click on the settings icon. Go into the internal storage and install App Cloner version 2.1.1. Since the Yoga Flame and Big Blue APKs, 
share the same file name as MVC2, which is known as 1UP, we must use the app cloner to rename these files. Otherwise, it would override the original game when we install them. Click the folder icon, click the plus sign, and clone from file. Go into the storage and double click on the big blue version 1.2.2 APK. Change the clone number and update the name. Go into the cloning options and remove the branding. Click the clone icon and click OK. Proceed with the install. Click on the folder icon, click the plus sign and clone from file. Select the Yoga Flame version 1.13 APK. Change the clone number and update the name. Click the clone icon and click OK. Proceed with the install. Press the escape button on the keyboard to exit out of the app cloner. To create an activity, swipe up and click on widgets. Click on the activity icon and drag it to the Nova Launcher homepage. Click on the down arrow to expand Big Blue and select the 1UP option. Long press on the icon to edit the name and the image. I'm using a transparent PNG for this icon, but you can use any image that you like. Repeat the same steps for Yoga Flame. Swipe up and click on Widgets. Click on the Activity icon and drag it to the Nova Launcher homepage. Scroll down, expand Yoga Flame and select the 1UP option. Long press on the icon to edit the name and the image. Repeat the same steps for MVC2. In this step, I'm just updating the wallpaper again.
press the Windows plus the N keys to access the top menu. Click on the settings icon, go into the internal storage, and double click on the button mapper 1.51 APK. Activate the button mapper. Scroll down and click add button. Click the plus symbol and press the button that you wish to map. Click add. Click on the recently added button to configure it. Customize it as per your preference. With this configuration, double tapping the button will take the user back to the Nova Launcher homepage. Time to try out the new games. When opening the game for the first time, you will need to give it access. The online functionality will only work on the original games of the cabinet. Thanks to the button mapper, I can double tap on the live button to take me back to the Nova Launcher homepage. You can toggle between the games by using the joystick. Press the Windows plus the N key to access the top menu, click on the settings icon, go into the internal storage, double click on RetroArch 32-bit to install it.
open RetroArch and allow access. Using the keyboard, press the right arrow key twice till you get the settings. Press the down arrow key until you get to input. Press the down arrow key until you get to control port 1 and start mapping the buttons. Select the button that you wish to map. Press the enter key and then hold the button down until it registers. Repeat the steps for the other buttons. Once you are done mapping the buttons, save the controller profile. Now you can use the joystick and buttons to navigate through the menus. Map the hotkeys. I configured the live key to close the content and exit out of the RetroArch games. Navigate to settings, on-screen display, and turn off the display overlays. Connect the system back to Wi-Fi. Navigate to the main menu, go to load cores, and download all the cores that you need. I downloaded the arcade cores. Once you have your cores ready, go to load content, go to the internal storage, and find your ROMs. Select the desired ROM, click load archive, and then find the core that will work with it. Double tap the live button to return back to the Nova Launcher homepage. Swipe up, click on widgets, select activity, drag it to the homepage, and create a shortcut for RetroArch. Press the Windows plus the N key to access the top menu, click the settings icon, go to the internal storage, and install File Manager. Allow access. Press the Windows plus the N key on the keyboard to access the top menu. Click on Settings, go to the Internal Storage, and delete any of the unnecessary files. I have soft modded two different MVC2 cabs using these steps, and everything seems to be working well. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel and look out for more content in the future.